this screencast is to support this lesson, uh, Lesson 22 from Language to Go Pre-Intermediate by G. Cunningham and S. Mohammed, uh, published by Longman. And it's uh, Lesson 22, as I said. Here's the students page and there are a few other bits I'd like you to look at. And one page of teacher's book notes here. Also, you've got some additional material in the class materials folder on Teams. You can see you've got three things here. You've got extra control practice tasks, uh, grammar reference and the tape scripts. We haven't got a recording in this particular lesson, but if you're looking for those things, you find them here. And that's for the whole course book. And remember, we're looking at lesson 22. So within the pre-intermediate, all extra controlled practice tasks, if you scroll down to lesson 22, there's a series of things here. And I think that uh, this one is going to be useful for this lesson. So I'll be talking about that a little bit later on. I've also got a piece of additional material here for longer lessons. This comes from Straightforward Pre-Intermediate by Philip Kerr, published by Macmillan. Uh, and there's this uh, page is the, is the student's book. And when you scroll down through the PDF, you'll also find some teacher's book notes. So we'll be talking a little bit about that one as well today. So what's it about? Well, uh, it's about, the topic is jobs, uh, as you can see. And the grammar point is uh, here. And it's the difference between do you like doing and would you like to do, uh, something that students often get confused with. And um, we've got some vocabulary at the start, leading into a little bit of reading, not very uh, deep and chunky. And then the grammar focus, moving on to control practice and freer practice. So a nice lesson structure there. Let's talk about how we could start it off. Uh, so here we go. We're going to start with this vocabulary page. We need a lead in, though, to come before that. I'm not so sure about the idea in the teacher's book. It's OK. If you like it, then please, please use it. Um, I personally would do something job related. So maybe you could even do an A to Z of jobs. Right, we're going to talk about jobs today. Let's think about the alphabet. What's the first letter? It's A. OK. Any jobs beginning with A? Anyone? Come on. Uh, any jobs beginning with B? Just have a little brainstorm. Get the students warmed up and used to speaking English. Then dive into this activity here. So the teacher's book notes are, are good for this. So please feel free to follow those. Um, the difference I would make would be maybe don't give them the words for the jobs at first. Show them the pictures and try to elicit the jobs. I think it's a good rule of thumb to always try to elicit rather than give things because it just keeps the students engaged, keeps them with you. So once you've got the names of the jobs, which I think they will largely know, then you can move on to looking at activity one. Uh, you might need to check a little bit of this. You might need to check maybe creative and active and responsibility. Um, so I'd probably do that with an example. So let's look at the farmer. OK, what do you think? Does a farmer work outside? Yes. Does a farmer work inside? I suppose yes, sometimes. Does a farmer earn a good salary? And then you can check the meaning by saying, you know, that means a salary. Is that um, money that you're given or money that you, you make or that you earn? Um, that's money that you earn, obviously. Um, uh, what about, is a farmer creative? Does he have a lot of imagination? Does he make things, he or she? Um, and so you can work through an example and clarify the meaning of the vocabulary through that example. And then you can say, all right, I want you to talk together about uh, the barman. What do you think about the barman? Talk together. So and so you start and get them talking together and you can sit out. And then when they dry up, you can say, right, talk about the chef. And if they've got lots to say, you could just do a couple of them. And if they've just got a little bit to say, then you could um, do all of them. Yeah, Think about a time limit of how long you'd like this activity to go on based on how much else you're doing during the lesson. Oh, I've forgotten to mention pronunciation. So obviously there's a bit of pronunciation work to do here, both with some of the vocabulary here, salary, outside, inside. You see how the word stress changes there? Uh, machines, mechanic market researcher. So build in some drilling in the early stages uh, of the items that are tricky. So here's some skills work that also acts as a context uh, or springboard to a context for the grammar to come. Um, so 
focus the students uh, on the first text. I probably just show them the first one at first, to be honest, otherwise they will start reading ahead and they'll stop listening to you. So show them the first text first and say, right, read this. What's the job? Yeah, what's the job? We've already talked about the jobs. Remember, farmer, mechanic, market researcher. Uh, which job is this? And they'll quickly say chef. And then you can say, right, I'm going to give you quite a short time limit, I think, maybe two minutes. I'm going to show you three more at the same time. I want you to look and decide which job each one is. Show them the others. Bit of silent time to read. Stop. And then say, right, talk together. Which What jobs uh, are for which advert? I think they'll probably get it quite quickly. And then you can say, OK, now I want you to choose uh, a job you would like to do and a job you wouldn't like to do. Yeah. So we're talking about the future. Uh, are we talking about real life or imagining? Yeah, it's imagining. OK, good. And give them a chance to think about which one they would like to do, which one they wouldn't like to do. So maybe a minute silence. And then say, everybody talk together. Which one would you like to do? Which one wouldn't you like to do? talk together, so-and-so, you start, and then you can sit back and listen. All right, you might want to collate some errors for correction after the activity. I think that would be nice, not necessarily focused on any target language, just some general errors that the students might find useful to have corrected after a fluency task of this type. So now we can move into the grammar. We've already started to work on this by getting the students to think about what they would like to do and wouldn't like to do. And we've talked about the future and we've talked about imagining things. So uh, I think think about how you want to go about it. You want to clarify the meaning first. As I say, we're halfway there with one of the items anyway. So I'd probably put up uh, a couple of examples like I like learning new skills and I'd like to be a mechanic and say which one is talking about the future possibility, imagining, and which one is talking about present likes and dislikes, things you like and don't like now. They'll be able to identify that fairly quickly, I think. And then we need to look at form because form is really the, the problem here. I feel. Um, I'm not sure that this box is very engaging. So you've got to think about how you're going to draw students into it. Um, I would probably put up something like this, but with some gaps. And then I can say, have a look here. There's some gaps, maybe just two or three. And then you can say, what do you think goes in the gaps? And you could always put the things that go in the gaps in a box and get them to put them in. And then I think it needs some checking. So you need to be saying, OK, so after like, what do we use? Do we use to do? Do we use an infinitive or do we use doing? Do we use an ing? So we need to clarify this aspect of form and then you can elicit. OK, so what do we use after like, after would like rather, excuse me, after would like? Do we use to do or do we use ing? We use to do. So don't have this form on the slide at the beginning. Elicit that part in the blue part from the students. And then perhaps a little bit of control practice, a bit of drilling. So you could you know, ask them, would you like to work from home? And they could say, yes, I would. No, I wouldn't. Oh, yeah, I'm doing it all the time because I'm in lockdown. And they could practice asking and answering together. So you could say, Abdul, ask the question. Um, Sarah, you answer. And that will practice the questions and answers from here. All right, just to get them used to manipulating the form and also a chance to do some drilling as well. Nothing major to focus on. I think you've got do you like, do you like, and you've got the to be, you've got the weak form there as well. So drill a few of the sentences that you have on your slide, but don't show the slide while you're drilling. Otherwise, the, they, they're reading and not listening, and it really affects the way that the students pronounce the words. So go to a blank slide and say, listen to me, everyone and then you can drill it or you can turn off your PowerPoint and have them looking at you, maybe pin you on the screen to make you big. If we're, I'm talking about being in an online environment, of course, um, and then they can see you. You can use your fingers to highlight the number of words and to show the contractions and the weak forms and to show the stressed words. And then you can have a nice fruitful drilling section there. 
I think for control practice, you've got some choices. There's this one in the book here, um, which is absolutely fine. I, something about it doesn't grab me, so I, I, I don't like it so much, but I'm sure it, it would work absolutely fine. Uh, but you've got some more here in the extra control practice tasks on, on, on Teams. So there's this gap fill here, which I quite like. You could make it easier for uh, lower level students by giving them two choices in each gap and they just simply have to choose the right one or you could make it more difficult like this or you could start with two choices and then have some with complete blanks. Um, just going back to the first act, uh, the first stage of the lesson as well, there is a nice activity here that you could use uh, with the students um, as a way in to the lesson. You could use that right at the beginning. So there's a few things here that you could incorporate if you like. Here's a nice activity to practice all of the elements of this lesson. I would start with one. I'd get everybody to write down two or three, maybe two, two jobs you would like to do, two jobs you wouldn't like to do and keep it secret. Then choose two students. One interviews the other one. OK, you might want to demonstrate this yourself first, to be honest. Get You could ask the questions to one of the students and get everybody else to listen. You can say, I'm going to ask Selin some questions. Everybody listen and think, what job do you think Selin should do? And then you interview Selin. At the end, you can say, what do you think, everybody? What job do you think she should do? And then you can say, right, Selin, did you have that written down on your list from earlier? And then that rounds it off quite nicely. And then nominate two more students to talk. And at that point, you can start writing down errors that you hear for correcting after the activity. I think it'll work really nicely. I think in a two hour lesson, you probably got room for something else. So this activity relates to the topic. Uh, I would suggest not using the text because it's quite dense. Uh, and I think we've got an alternative here. So I'd look at the, the teacher's book notes first, which are in this same document. You just scroll down. I'll show you now. I think this is a good idea to lead into this activity. Using this here, you put some kind of character uh, on the board or on a slide, say they've got no friends, write up, Den is very eh, his biggest problem is eh, and then you're going to elicit lonely and loneliness and then you can go on to elicit hunger, hungry and hunger and show them the same format as the exercise on the student's book. I wouldn't then get them to work through the exercise together. I would give them some time to work alone to fill in the chart. Let's go back and have a look at that. So here's the chart. Get them to work alone first. Let's see what they know. Maybe they can come up with the other ones. And then after a little while, you could put up another box with the words in it and then they can put them into the right place. Then maybe some drilling, some checking of meaning at that point. Some really nice pronunciation work you could do there. Then I'd move on to the speaking task and it's talking about jobs. You can choose these ones or ones from early on in the lesson. So you could even start with uh, a chef. And you could say, OK, so a chef, a good chef is and then get them to choose one of the adjectives from here. And then you could say well, a good chef needs to have. And then choose one of the nouns from there and see if you can get them to extend. So a good chef is because blah, 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 blah. A good chef needs to have because blah, 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 blah. See if you can elicit some examples. Maybe look at the chef, look at the airline pilot, a couple of the jobs from earlier on in the lesson. And then you can step back and say, here are more jobs, these four or some other ones. I want you to do the same thing. You want to say a good police officer is, a good officer, police officer needs to have. And don't forget to say why you think that, say because. And again, you could nominate one person to talk and everybody else could think, could have the task of listening and see if they agree or not. And then you could nominate someone else to talk and everyone else can listen to see if they agree or not. And again, you can be listening and noting down errors that you hear and examples of good language use for later correction. There's an extension activity uh, of a perfect boss here. So uh, if you don't feel that that's going to fill your time frame, then you could use this exercise here in number two. Uh, but as I say, don't use the horoscope reading, um, just use the activities around it. Okay.